think your, your client is present, so... Uh... Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's begin the hearing. So uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> uh, it's now 7.02. My name is John Leonard. I'm chairman of the Milton Board of Appeals. Uh, with me this evening are board members uh, Brian Connolly and uh, Nick Gray. Um, uh, this is the May 31st. 2023 hearing at seven o'clock, uh, dealing with the application of, is it Sabri, uh, Marion? Sabri or Sabri or? I say Sabri, Sabri Torki. He might want to correct us if we're wrong. Yes, Sabri, yes, Sabri. Sabri. Okay, so Sabri Torki, uh, being represented by attorney and attorney Marion McEttrick uh, of Milton, Massachusetts. Uh, <clears throat> this application relates to uh, premises, uh, the land and building at 1365 Canton Avenue, the applicant is seeking a special permit uh, in order to import 560 cubic yards of fill onto the property and for the movement of 860 cubic yards of fill within the property confines. Uh, this property is located in a residence AA zoning district. Uh, the uh, advertisement, uh, which I'm referring to, uh, indicates that the Milton zoning bylaw allows the importation of not more than 200 cubic yards of clean fill to any lot without a special permit uh, within a three-year period. And a special permit is required for moving more than 200 cubic yards of fill from one part of a lot to another part of the same lot. Uh, according to the zoning bylaw section 4A, um, Section 5C. Um, so with, uh, so we, I've, I've summarized the, the advertisement. Um, just for the sake of the record, we did receive a letter from Mrs. Uh, McGettrick. In fact, two letters. One is May 11th, 2023, to the Board of Appeals, uh, describing and discussing the application and the uh, uh, needed relief. <clears throat> And the first letter we received from Mrs. McKetrick is dated March 28th, 2023, uh, dealing with uh, um, the uh, importation of fill and the moving of fill. <clears throat> Mrs. McKetrick also has filed with us a plan from Robert E. Hannigan Associates. And the plan is entitled 1365 Canton Avenue, Milton, Mass. It's dated December 8th, 2022, and it shows the confines of the subject property. We also have a, a plan from uh, Merrill Engineering. The uh, date is a little bit small for me to read, but it looks like it's January 23rd, 2002, but I could be wrong there. <clears throat> and it's showing the, top of the topography of the subject property uh, and the, the, play, the placement of the house on the lot. Uh, we also received a couple of other sketches uh, showing topography, we have a letter from Environmental Consulting and Restoration, LLC, to Mr. Talkie by Brad Holmes. It's dated February 28th, 2023, and it describes the site and the uh, issues uh, that, are re that relate to this particular application. <clears throat> we have a quick claim deed uh, when uh, the property was, uh, was, has, was acquired by 1365 Canton Avenue, LLC, on uh, September 2nd, 2022. And we have a Commonwealth of Massachusetts uh, uh, LLC uh, Certificate of Organization for 1365 Canton Avenue LLC, indicating that the resident agent is Mr. Sabri Torki, uh, the applicant for this uh, particular matter. Um, all of these uh, documents, including an unofficial uh, property record card from the Milton Assessor's Office, <clears throat> all of these will be as part of the record in this proceeding. They've all been uh, put on our website uh, uh, well before this evening so that anybody who wishes to uh, <clears throat> get involved in the details of this application had the opportunity to, uh, to read uh, Mrs. McGethrick's materials and to uh, be prepared to answer to ask any questions that you may have. So with a, that as a rather long uh, and, uh, uh, entry, Mrs. McKittrick, why don't we turn the 
the ball over to you. Uh, welcome back to the Board of Appeals. We're delighted to hear from you. Thank you very much. And yes, I am Mary McKettrick. I'm representing the applicant. And with me tonight is Brendan Sullivan. He's an engineer for Merrill Engineers. And um, in this type of application, which is really an engineering fill drainage sort of um, application, I always rely quite a bit on the engineer and the engineer's plan. Um, but I would like to give you some background before I um, perhaps turn it over to Brendan Sullivan and the owner. Um, the owner purchased this property in September uh, 2022. Um, it ba the property had been basically in disturbed condition with a half or not even a half finished two-story addition on a small ranch house that was begun in 2004 and 2005. And apparently for financial reasons, the addition was never completed. The land was um, excavated all around the house and into the backyard, and then just kind of left in an excavated condition. So between 2006 and the present day, the yard again, you know, grew over with yard, with weeds and grass and, and even trees. And it has become fairly difficult to tell, you know, what the condition of the yard was um, when this uh, construction first took place. That's an important issue because perhaps not so much for the Board of Appeals, but for the Conservation Commission. Um, after Mr. Torkey purchased the property, he brought in some fill and started trying to grade the rear yard and then um, talked to the building commissioner who informed him that he needed to apply for uh or at least he needed to have a grading and fill plan prepared first in order to determine whether he needed a special permit from the Board of Appeals in order to regrade the yard. Um, so that began a fairly long process. Uh, Mr. Torkey began looking for an engineer. He'd, he'd had a site plan prepared by Robert Hannigan, but he needed an uh, Merrill engineers to do this. They did begin work. They were engaged in January. Um, and, uh, he also was then had an um, environmental consultant, Brad Holmes, who had recently worked on a property just to the rear of this one that faces uh, Blue Hill Ave. And both of those properties are within 200 feet of a stream. And so this also introduces another layer of approvals because this means that the area within 200 feet of a stream requires a notice of intent for any work to be done. So everything stopped um, after that first note, that first conversation with Mr. Prondack. Um, and initially, um, the building commissioner was not willing to issue any building permits for any work at all inside the building. So Mr. Torkey was kind of stuck until he got these applications filed. And then the building commissioner said, well, maybe if you file these applications, then I can let you go ahead. That didn't really happen, but we did work as quickly as we could to file both the notice of intent with the Conservation Commission and this application in March to the Board of Appeals. And then what I'm gonna tell you now is that we're probably not ready for a decision tonight because the process now has become more complicated and we're dealing with the Conservation Commission as well. It's moving along very well. We've had a meeting with the commission. We've had a site walk. There's been a initial, um, there was an initial grading plan prepared, which you have in your materials. But then after the site walk, the commission provided its advice as to how the grading should be done in the rear yard. And now um, the engineer is working on a new grading plan and there will be finally be a landscaping plan. Um, the reason that's significant is that not only do you look at the amount of fill that has to be moved around to do these things, you also have to look at whether the drainage has been addressed and what the grading is and whether you feel that it's it's, it's addressed in a satisfactory way. And um, you can't do that until you have a final plan. So tonight, um, the engineer is here and we've given you preliminary materials. I sent you a, another plan just this morning or yesterday. It's not a, a final plan in any way. It was really just to indicate that the applicant is working on getting to the point of having a final plan and getting that to you. I just thought since we had this hearing uh, scheduled and the engineer was available, that you might have questions to prepare for eventually making a decision. Um, I believe that you will have to continue this hearing tonight to a, to a future date, and you'll have to allow sufficient time 
I would say possibly a month or two, two months even, so that the Conservation Commission can reach a final uh, decision. But maybe the um, engineer has more advice about that. Just generally, I would I would say that what's happened here is Sabri Torkey did bring, he did import some fill onto the property, but um, his um, contractor has, you know, documented the amount of fill, which was 160 cubic yards. So that amount of fill that was brought onto the property, that's within the legal limit for what you can do without a special permit. So the issue initially in the application to you was that fill had been moved around in the property in the back. And there was a lot of, there were all kinds of hills and valleys and you know, just generally it was very irregular in back there. So it was smoothed out. And that that movement of fill in the backyard um, exceeded the allowed the amount that you're allowed to move around. And that was the 860 cubic yards of fill that you see in the application. So um, then after we met with the Conservation Commission and talked to them about what would be done to finish this property and, and landscape it, we talked a little bit about the fact that you would need additional loam to put on top of the, you know, the top of the grading. And I asked the engineer for an estimate of that amount, um, which did exceed 200 cubic yards. And so that's why I filed the amendment to the application for an additional amount of fill. I think it's 560 yards of cubic yards of fill to be brought into the property. So we now have two prong application, one for movement of fill within the property and one for um, fill have to be brought into the property. And so eventually we'd be asking you to approve the import, importation of fill and the movement of fill that's um, addressed in my original letter and also in my amendment, amended letter or my letter amending the application. Um, so I, at that, at this point, um, I don't know whether I could maybe, I don't know whether Brendan Sullivan wants to make some comments or whether you want to ask us questions. Brendan, do you want to say anything at this point? Um, just to, just um, to no, I, I, I mean, I think, I think you summarized it pretty well. I mean, I could, I could pull the plan up on the screen if you want me to, if you want to uh, take a look at the site itself, uh, if that would be helpful. Um, or like I said, I could just take some questions uh, uh, moving forward. You want um, would be helpful if we put the the plan up on the screen. Would the board members like us to do that? Well, <clears throat> excuse me. Let me ask my board members and see what their uh, intention is. Uh, Mr. Conley, do you uh, want to proceed in a somewhat informal way here to look at the property? Or yeah, I, mean, I think we're. I guess if we're starting a process, maybe just a, a quick overview would be helpful. I know we'll be coming back, um, as Attorney McKetrick said, but I I think it would be. Um, helpful to get just a, a quick uh, description of the plan. Mr. Gray, what do you have to say? I absolutely agree with that. Okay, so uh, why don't uh, Mr. Sullivan uh, give us a, uh, an introduction, uh, go over your plan a little bit, and uh, it'll be a primer for uh, our return. Hopefully we can remember what you said in two or three months from now. Sure. Um, so this this is the site here. It's um it's on the north side of Canton Ave. Um, we have the Ballister Bart Brook in the rear offsite property. We also have a BBW associated with the Ballister Brook um, on the northwest corner of the property. Uh, once again, that's uh, that's offsite actually. So those are the two resource areas that affect the property uh, that brings it into um, uh, the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission. Um, we have a 50 foot buffer as shown in here in this green line. We have a 100-foot buffer from the BVW. Uh, we also have a 100-foot um, um, inner riparian riverfront area, and we have a 200-foot um, outer riparian zone associated with the river, uh, associated with the uh, uh, the Ballister Brook. Uh, once again, that's all under the conservation, the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission. Um, I was brought onto this project after a lot of this bill has brought in has been brought in. Uh, it was kind of like an after the fact type of thing. So we don't have any original uh, topography. Uh, we do have some some good data from the GIS. Uh, so I, in conjunction with some of that and some um, some some um, aerial pictures, um, I came up with this area um, that's shaded. Uh, it's about it's about fifteen thousand square feet of disturbance um, uh, from the original grade um, that we use for a number uh, for a conservation commission that. That we used for the amount of fill that was some of the fill that was brought in. Um, as Marion said, the 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 backyard was full of um, 
you know the the main the main house was this this little portion right here i believe here was a small you know probably a three bedroom ranch and then there was an addition an addition made back here to the right side and the rear um back in 05 maybe is that right marion approximately yes yes it started um, it's 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 certainly not finished it's just it's not even it's rough framed it's not the the only electrical electrical in there is um is um uh, fire alarms uh that was required for the transfer of the property but so this is just basically an open shell right now so the the site was under a, a bit of construction from what i understand from 2005 up until sabre purchased the property last fall um so i guess the ask here is and so the the other plan i came up with um because conservation wanted to see some of this fill removed from this um northwest corner so we're taking this we're taking this we're going to pull this grade back um, and some material actually might even come off site. Um, but for a conservative number, um, I, so the entire site, some of the, some of the front yard may be some, some loom, but most of the backyard and the pool is going to remain, it's going to be rehabbed. Um, but most of the backyard needs to be re re loamed and seeded. Um, so just taking a rough area of approximately, you know, the, the lot size is about 54, almost 55,000 square feet. Um, taking about half of that and just, and even just half of that with four inches of loom on it, you come up with uh, 400 cubic yards of material. So, um, and that's with a 20% um, increase due to compaction. Um, so that's, that's where that 400 yards comes up. It's, it's really just, it doesn't sound like a lot, four inches of loom over the, half the site, but it, 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 it certainly, it adds up fairly quickly. And um, just to add a little bit from what we've learned so far from the Conservation Commission, and it's in line with what you just said, uh, they wanted us to take that left back corner, a, a large portion of it, and they want the owner to make that a grassy meadow rather than, um, you know, just grass that he'd cut. And the grassy meadow would probably only be cut once a year. Um, and that's, this is all in an effort to have a more natural um, drainage area and and absorption of water so instead of having a more level surface and then right at the edge going down on a steeper hillside they wanted a more gradual plan so that's that's all that movement that um mr sullivan was just talking about it's not we don't have the final plan yet um we don't we'll have to review it with the conservation commission but that's the general idea of what's going to be designed um and you know so it's going to take a while to finish it and i I think we're going to need a good bit more time and then come back to see you again. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks, Mary. Thanks, Mr. Sullivan. Let me just uh, ask my board members. Mr. Connolly, do you have any uh, questions of Mr. Sullivan? Uh, that was re really helpful. Just, I guess, at a high level, the, the, um, if I'm hearing you right, because it's, it's a bit hard to picture, I'm not sure if those elevation lines are the current elevation lines or the, the, kind of draft plan new, but is, it sounds like the plan is not so much to change, or tell me, it's not so much to change the elevations on the site, but is it just to spread soil? And is it sort of more just creating a new la layer of soil on top and evening it out? Or just to kind of help me understand the goal of the the work? No, so so the goal is to, the, the fill area is this, um, the northwest corner of this area in uh -huh. here, which is going to be pulled back. So they pretty much almost want this to get down to almost existing grade that was there before. The contour line you see are the, is the existing grade out there today. Uh, uh, so it's kind of a flat area and then drops off at a fairly steep slope along the edges, along the back and along the, along the side. Uh, so some of this material is going to be pulled out, pulled back, and like I said, probably some of it removed. Um, and then the loam and seed will go on top of that, the four inches of loam, because the, the material that's out there is basically, it's just, um, you know, it's your, your if you want to call it dirt and gravel, it's it's not gonna, it's not really um, conducive to, you know, uh, growing a grass or a meadow or anything like that. Great, thank you. Uh, Mr. Gray, do you have any questions of Mr. Sullivan? No, Mr. Conley uh, took my question, so I don't have anything further. <laughs> okay, that's, that's fine. So, uh, Marion, uh, is it your suggestion that this uh, case go over for 60 days or is that cutting things short? Um, well, I'd, I'd ask Brendan Sullivan what he thinks. I'm expecting we might have a preliminary another meeting with the Conservation Commission in June, but we won't be done then. 
And then they meet only once a month. So then the next opportunity would be July. So Brendan, do you think that by July, the July meeting, we would be likely to have a final plan or not? Because we um, well, so we, we should be we should be close, right? If we if we go back to conservation one more time, get an idea what they're looking for, um, and then so I guess if we come back, so we'd be coming back here before the second meeting in conservation. Um. You want to come back here when you have an approved plan. Yeah. So I, I don't think that's going to happen the next conservation hearing, right? Oh, no. No. It's not going to so, happen in June. How yeah, about if so, we reschedule for late July after the second conservation meeting? Yeah. I want to yep. keep a schedule because, you know, we. it's important to Mr. Torkey to have a plan so that he knows what work he's going to be able to do. But on the other hand, it's just not realistic to finish it in two weeks, right? Correct. Okay. So I know, um, Mr. Leonard, I don't know how schedules look at that time. I know it's summer and people are on vacation, but I mean, we're, we're at your disposal in terms of when you can schedule it, but it should be after about, it should be later than um, mid July because the, the next conservation meets usually around the 14th. Um, Brian Conley, uh, do you have vacation plans that you you know of uh, for uh, not that conflict with um that schedule, so I can be pretty flexible from the last week of July on. Uh, I, I, I'm assuming we're talking about a Wednesday evening. I assume so as well, but yeah. uh, I'm not sure. Uh, Nick, how about uh, how about your schedule? Um, actually, miraculously, that's the end of July, beginning of August is okay for me at the moment. Okay. <clears throat> well. <laughs> Um, I don't know my schedule. I don't necessarily have any irreconcilable conflicts at the present time, but I don't know what the future holds. So, um, Julia, what what do we? Uh, I don't have a calendar immediately at hand. Hold on. Okay, if we go over to the last week in July, that's the week of the twenty fourth. Um, how how was the board scheduled? Do we have anything scheduled at that time? No, we're we're free. So if you wanted to do that Wednesday, the twenty sixth, that would be fine. Yeah, that, that's a possibility. Let me just ask you one question. I'm looking at my map, my strength calendar, and it shows July twenty seventh as being in red. Do you what was that? Is that a holiday? Or is it? Uh, some something significant. I don't know. I don't know what the significance of July twenty seventh is. I don't see a holiday there. I'm not exactly sure. I know the Board of Appeals. We don't have any meeting scheduled past next week, so I know that we're that's free. I'm not sure why it would be red though. Okay. So, um, how else, how is this, Mary? And we'll uh, continue this over to the twenty sixth Wednesday, the twenty sixth. At uh, at seven o'clock, but you know, with the, with the proviso that uh, if uh, the application is not you know, in, in form ready to be addressed, you know, let us know a week or so in advance, and um, so that we won't get trapped. And the the other proviso is the uh, the unknown, and that is if uh, somehow. Uh, uh, my colleagues uh, or me uh, find that date uh, for, for reasons presently unknown, inconvenient, we'll notify you uh, a week or 10 days before that date, and then we'll bump it into uh, some acceptable date in August. So we'll try to keep it as flexible as possible, but at least you have a date to work for it. How does that sound? So that's, that's works for me um, the first week in August. Wednesday would be the latest I could do it. I couldn't do Thursday. So hopefully it won't go to the first week in August, but um, it's fine. And that's a good plan. And all we have to do is publicly announce a continuation date on the, on this date of Wednesday, the 26th, if we, if you can't make it, or if there's some other problem with finishing the plan, Brendan, what is, what, how would that be for you? Do you know? Um, I think that works for me. The 26th should work for me. Yeah. yeah. And Sabri. Yeah, that sounds good for me. Okay. 
All right. Well, that's fine for us if you can do it. We appreciate it. Let me just check, Brian. Uh, 26, good for you at 71. Yes. And, and just, I do have one question before we um, adjourn, but yes, that's a good time for me. Okay. Let's do, Nick. Uh, you're, all, you're all set for the 26, Nick. I am. That's fine. Thank you. Mr. Conley, what's your question? I just wanted to ask if um, if you have had an opportunity to talk to your neighbors, in particular your abutters, and um, if they have any, um, in particular, if they have any sort of written confirmation of their support or objection, um, in particular the neighbor to the left, of, I, it looks like you're planning to do some work, some grading on the property. I don't know if you have an agreement or um, something else to confirm that, but it'd be great to just understand. Um, I understand from your letter, it makes sense to me that the neighbors are pleased to see some improvement on the site. It'd be great for the record to have something like that with the board. So I'm just going to ask Sabri to address that. We have discussed with the neighbor on the right. That neighbor did come to the Conservation Commission meeting and hearing. Uh, and yes, those neighbors are um, pleading <laughs> basically to to move forward with this work and to um, allow the cleanup of the lot and so forth. So, and the neighbor on the left, Sabri will address that. We'll be having more discussion with that neighbor, but what contact have you had so far? Yeah, I mean, I I have talked to him and like, I explained everything to him as far as we, you know, everything we've done so far. And he, he has no problem with everything. And he, he was going to write a letter to just just say that whatever we have to do, he's okay with it. And we may be having some kind of agreement with that neighbor because as you can see from the plans, the 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 steep grading that's being adjusted is right at the lot line. So it, there's, you know, we just have to make sure that everybody's on board and, and approves and wants us to complete that work. So you're right about that. But for that next hearing, we'll have ample time to actually have written confirmation from at least those two neighbors, if not more. And I know that's always helpful. So we'll work yes, on getting the, the, the neighbors, I think the rear property, the neighbors that are, you know, visually or through drainage or otherwise affected, having some confirmation of their viewpoints really, really would help the board. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. And Mary, let me, let me tell you, I drive by this property uh, virtually every day. Uh, and it's been a mess for 15 uh, and uh, it's been a terrible decision. And I, I don't recall the circumstances. The, the neighbors to the left uh, had some type of contribution with the former owners of the property uh, and its state. Um, and I think that worked itself out. But uh, I, I think your your comment is, uh, is propitious. I think most... Uh, Neighbors uh, surrounding this property would jump for joy to have this property uh, restored in a tasteful manner. Um, and uh, it, because it's, it's conditioned and deplorable for, as you said, you know, 15 years. And it's um, one of the more disappointing properties in a beautiful section of the town of Milton. So, with all of that, uh, we're going to continue this uh, hearing until uh, Wednesday, July 26, uh, 2020, at uh, 7 in the evening. So and, uh, thank you, Mrs. McGettrick. I appreciate your uh, uh, mini presentation. And, uh, I wish you the best of luck with the Conservation Commission and other uh, municipal boards. Thank you very much. Okay. So we'll be... We'll be adjourned on this particular hearing and we'll take a minute or so and then pick up our second hearing for the evening. Mary, are you all set to start the second hearing? Uh, Robert Hannigan is should be recognized somehow. He was trying to be in this hearing. And I'd also be looking for the owner, Tim Anastasia. I just let Robert Hannigan in. I haven't seen Tim yet, but I will let him in when he comes. Okay. You want to There's wait? Go ahead, Joe. Sorry. There's somebody named User with their hand up. Should I assume that's maybe them? And I'll have them over. 
I don't know. <laughs> Oh. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. No picture, but uh, I suppose that's a blessing. <laughs> well, I mean, we can go ahead. I think um, the one I really want to have at this hearing is the engineer, Robert Hannigan. Okay. Um, and I yeah. think you're Anastasia. Him Anastasia will be here. He's not here already. Am I, um, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Good. Thank you. Yeah, welcome back to the Board of Appeals, Mr. Hannigan. Thank you, Mr. Leonard. Okay, let's uh, let's kick off this hearing. And uh, uh, Julia, let us know if, uh, if Mr. Tim Anastasia uh, uh, appears okay. while proceeding. Yeah. Okay, and we're going to call to order the second hearing of the evening. This is the 730 hearing, and it's on the application of Kim Anastasia uh, by attorney Marion McGettrick um, regarding property at 120 Granite Place. The application is dated April 28th, 2023, and it seeks approval to build a 20-foot high retaining wall at the rear of the lot. Yeah. Also a special permit to transfer approximately 1,102 cubic yards of fill from the excavation caused by the permitted additions to the two-family home to the rear yard. Now, this property is in a residency zoning district, and uh, the transference of more than 200 cubic yards of fill from one part of the lot to another <clears throat> is regulated by Section 4A of the zoning bylaw. Um, Mrs. McGettrick has uh, filed with this um, application. Uh, the letter from uh, Joseph Prondack dated April 4th, 2023, uh, uh, dealing with the uh, this application. We have the actual application dated April 28th, 2023, submitted by Mrs. McGettrick. We have a April 27th, 2003 letter from uh, Marion McGettrick regarding this particular ap application together with uh, in plan of land by Robert E. Hannigan Associates. <clears throat> Dated March 28, 2023, at least revised as of, of that date, showing the subject property and the various uh, grades on the subject property. Uh, we have a larger sketch plan showing grading of the property. We have a confirmatory Massachusetts deed. Uh, wherein this property was acquired on September 22nd, 2022. Uh, and another sketch of the property showing uh, from maps online site uh, showing the subject property and various uh, gradations of the property. And we have an unofficial property card uh, from the Milton Assessors uh, with respect to uh, this particular property. So we thank Mrs. McGettrick for supplying all of these materials. Uh, they all have been uh, placed on our website and have been uh, available to the public uh, well in advance of this particular hearing. So um, I, I should introduce the board members. My name is John Leonard. I'm chairman of the Board of Appeals. With us uh, tonight, uh, uh, board members uh, Brian Connolly and uh, Nick uh, Gray. So. I think uh, without further ado, uh, Mrs. McGettrick, welcome back to the Board of Appeals. We're delighted to hear from you. Thank you. Yes, and I'm Mary McGettrick, the applicant. Um, and I'm here tonight with um, Robert Hannigan, who's the project engineer, and Tim Anastasia, who is the owner of the property, is also uh, at this meeting. 
Um, so um, 120 Granite Place is a two family residence at the end of Granite Place. Um, the backside of this property slopes down towards Andrews Park at a, a fairly good slope. Um, the property is being renovated and there's a significant addition being added to the back, but it will remain a two unit property. Um, Phil has been excavated to provide a basement for the addition. Um, so while the zoning bylaw in section four allows excavation fill to be moved around on the site, um, that provided 450, 415 cubic yards of fill, which could be used to grade the rear yard. That wasn't enough to, to do all of the grading. So um, a total additional amount of fill of 687 cubic yards is required by the applicant to complete the grading plan that he shows you in this application. And the purpose of the grading of the rear yard is to provide a more level backyard instead of a slope going right down to Andrews Park. The, um, the fill special permit highlights the state for providing grading plan that you show existing contours and proposed contours that you show that the fill will be properly supported. And that's how a retaining wall becomes a factor or, an, or a fact um, that has to be described in an application like this. The wall itself doesn't require a zoning um, special permit or a variance, but the wall has to be determined to be adequate support for the fill that's being placed. Um, so the, the um, soil characteristics also have to be analyzed when fill is added like this and the ability of the soil to absorb storm, storm water has to be studied. And the final plan should, should show, should demonstrate or should support the argument that whatever the plan is, um, the storm water on site will be continued to be absorbed or perhaps even better absorbed by the new plan. And there should be justification for those conclusions. Um, so I, um, You've, you've listed the documents that we provided, um, and we did we did provide a little bit more detail about the retaining wall, not so much showing, you know, its ability to support, but just describing in more detail the height of the retaining wall at different points, because the denial letter from Joseph Prondack says that it's 20 feet high. It's not 20 feet high all the way around, because the rear yard slopes down and the retaining wall is shorter in some places. It's not any higher than 20 feet, however, in any location. Um, so I wonder, um, Bob, if you wanna talk a little bit about how you looked at the soil when you found when you examined the soil um, and what you felt the drainage ability would be once this grading is, is completed. Yes, Marion, I, I looked at it in, in two aspects, uh, one on site, uh, observation. Uh, I'm a, a certified soil um, analyst of the DEP for the uh, 19, for 25 years, and I've been looking at uh, dirt for over 50 years. Uh, for uh, I also relied on the, um, the uh, USDA uh, uh, corporate soil survey maps and they show that the uh, uh, is the Merrimack Urban Land Complex, which uh, the runoff runoff class is very low. That's runoff of, of stormwater. Uh, depth to the water table is more than 80 inches, and it's a hydrologic source group A, which is the best, is A to D, and and A uh, absorbs the. Uh, Stormwater runoff uh, very rapidly. It recharges into the ground very rapidly. Um, so initially, on the earlier plans, I suggested to uh, Joe Prandack that uh, no recharge was necessary. Uh, Joe Prandack suggested that we uh, recharge um, roof runoff uh, gutters and downspouts for the uh, north side of the property. So we provided uh, two recharge galleys, uh, one in the uh, front driveway and the other one uh, in the rear of the property by in, inside the uh, 
proposed with any wall. So uh, in my opinion, that's beyond necessary, but the uh, project suggested we do it, so we agreed to do it. So the, are those the 160 gallon mini dry wells? Is that what you're describing? Or is this Basically they are, yeah. They're uh, concrete cylinders with uh, uh, prefabricated holes in them. There's uh, uh, crushed stone around them, crushed stone under them. Uh, there's a uh, cast iron grate that uh, can be removed to, to uh, clean any type of debris that happens to end up in there, which is relatively rare. Uh, and, uh, And Bob, can you just uh, describe for the board the prior condition and then the what it will be like once this is graded, just in general? I mean, I know we have your your um, we have your plan, but how will the grade compare? Yeah. <clears throat> at, at the rear of the property, uh, behind the house, there was a, a very steep slope. There, there was a small backyard that. Uh, went from approximately 90 elevation 91 down to a low area of uh, about uh, 67 um, and the purpose of the wall was to provide a, a relatively level rear yard for the properties the um, wall is uh, meet zoning with, with respect to the setbacks uh, nine feet in the rear of the lot line eight feet on 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 each side and that was uh, that was a little bit less prior, but Joe Prondex suggested or determined that they, they should be uh, nine and eight feet. Um, the, um, and as Marion had um, discussed, the, the wall height is not uh, 20 feet. It's... Uh, it varies in length on the, on the left hand side. It's, it starts out obviously at, at zero feet, and then halfway down the left hand side, it's it's a seven foot reveal. At the at the uh, corner, it's thirteen point nine. That averages out to about eight, just a little over eight feet. Uh, the average height of that portion of the wall. Uh, the rear that um, abuts Andrews Park. Um, on the left hand side, the south side is. 13.9 feet, then it's 13.6 feet, 16.8, 19.0, and 21.5, which is the highest point on the wall. And that averages just under uh, 17 feet. On the uh, north side, it runs from the 21 and a half feet to uh, 20.6, 17.8, 12.5, 8.0, and then uh, zero feet uh, as it meets the existing grade and that averages 13.4 feet. The, um, interestingly enough, um, I'm not sure how, how it applies, but the, um, the, if you're familiar with Andrews Park, uh, all around the perimeter, there's a um, six foot high chain link fence and that uh, existing chain link fence on Andrews um, Park property is is 10 feet into the, the park property. So approximately 10 feet, it varies slightly. So the nine foot offset uh, will actually provide between the uh, proposed wall and the uh, chain link fence at Andrews Park about 19 feet uh, separation between the uh, chain link, existing chain link fence and uh, the proposed wall. If the chair wants to uh, see if there are questions from board members, I do have one letter of support, one email from a neighbor, which at some point I'll read, but I can wait to do that till after you have questions. Okay, that, that's uh, fair. Uh, Mr. Conley, do you have any questions of Mr. Hannigan or, or Mrs. McGettrick? Uh, yes, I've got um, a number of kind of questions and issues to work through. Um, do you have any renderings of what this 20 foot wall will look like from Andrews Park? That's I no. Don't, no, yeah, no, I don't believe we do. Um, 
And have you met with the Milton Parks Department to discuss this? I, have, I don't believe, have you, Tim, you have you talked to anyone from the Park Department about it? I, I spoke to Kevin Chisholm on the phone. Mm -hmm. uh, and he said he doesn't, as long as it's not on his property and it's on that setback, he doesn't care. He's, he's, he was fine with it. Uh, this was probably, uh, I'd say about eight weeks ago. And uh, I did have my electrician on the phone uh, on a conference call with me to have uh, someone confirm that. Um, and tell me about your meetings with, and yes, it's, it's a, I mean, look, it's an enormous, tall retaining wall, very close to your property line. So can you tell me about your meetings and support you have from your neighbors on Elmwood Ave and you know your abutter on granite as well. So the abutter on granite is a, is the letter that uh, Marion has supporting us full force. Uh, we also have uh, an email from across the street abutters supporting full force. We have uh, down on the right side or the north side from what Bob talked about. They, they just want to make sure that the runoff and the drainage is handled correctly, which I believe uh, going through this process over five months with Joe P and dotting the I's and crossing the T's, making sure the site plan is basically has, it's everything that's requested in the bylaws is on the site plan, everything down to a T, showing that we do take this seriously. Uh, I do believe that we're above and beyond what, what's requested of us to do. Uh, I've never, I've been doing this for a long time. I've never had an issue in the past. So is the purpose here just, just to create a backyard? Yeah, I, well, I like to leave the space, uh, you know, the best possible use. That's where I try to leave a space where I go. And I'm also into preservation and, pres and uh, preservation, you know, re you know, restoration. So that way I kept the existing structure because it's 1890. I didn't tear it down. Um, I kept a lot of items I want to reinstall into this house. And there was no backyard. There was absolutely no backyard. Uh, it's, a, it's a steep slope. It was unusable. So the best use of the space is to build a retaining wall so children and families can, can use it. Otherwise, it's, it's unattainable. And I truly believe that the runoff from the existing hill is worse than having fill, grade A fill put in with, with these uh, dry wells. Like, it, and I'll tell you, honestly, I, I've had a half a dozen companies come in, you know, discussing different types of dry wells, Caltech systems, and every single one said it was not needed. It's not needed. The fill, the permeable uh, space here is is beyond required. What's required for for drainage, the hundred year storm, uh, all the above. But the um, it looks like you've attempted to max out as much as the zoning would allow the um, the size of the elevated backyard you want to create. And well, we did, we did um, do the setbacks. We did a foot past the setbacks. Yeah, I don't think that's right, but we'll get to that in a minute because I have some setback questions. Um, <laughs> but so what you've done is a 20-foot wall on top of a 8-foot or 9-foot setback. So your wall height is more than two times as high as the setback you're offering. But that the point on that, that point on that wall is 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 feet. Just remember that this wall. Is fairly long, and like uh, Bob said, who's the certified civil engineer, the average height of this wall is way, way below that. I think the spin of having this wall say it's that high is is incorrect because it's not that high. In fact, it's much, much lower. There's only one point in this wall that's that point. Everywhere else. It goes down drastically because the slope of the hill is drastic. So if the slope of the hill is drastic, the wall goes down drastically. It just it's with the contrary. Yeah, it from, um, from your neighbor at three forty four Elmwood's backyard perspective, where you have an eight foot setback, it ranges from twenty one and a half feet to really seventeen point eight feet, 
So that neighbor's experience is quite high. And then when I look at it from the Andrews Park, which, you know, we have a heightened sense of public benefit to protect and to um, evaluate, right? So 21 feet, 19 feet, 16.8 feet, when you get about a third of the way down the wall, I can't see what it is at the center point because that one's not marked. And then when you get to the other third, you're down to 13 and a half feet. So, I mean, e even if you blended the 13.9 on one side and 21.5 on the other, we're still averaging about 17 feet on a nine foot setback. So it's still a very, I mean, it's a huge, it's a, it's, that's, I mean, in my perspective, that's an enormous wall uh, from anyone to look at, especially from a public space. And I think it's just to confirm that this, this wall doesn't go to the feasibility of your addition. Your addition could be built, whether you have this side, yeah, this backyard um, elevated or not. This is just to create a better backyard experience for your occupants. It's, it's a better, it's, again, what's the best use for the space? That's what I ask everyone to try and be fair. Uh, in the special permit, I'm looking for a variance here. You know, I'm just, I wanted to make sure I did everything correct. I wanted, I did everything that, that, that Joe P asked of me. And I spoke to the neighbor that you were, that you're talking about. And I gave him the survey. I told him what I've done. Uh, and I made sure that everything that we're doing is above and beyond what is required. So this, and I talked to, to, to Chisholm and he was fine with it. So I've like, I'm not, look, I'm a lifelong Mil, you know, Miltonite. I was born and raised here. I went to Tucker school. My kid goes here. I'm married. I live here in Milton. It's not like I'm trying to do something and run away. I'm, I'm on this, you know, I coach sixth grade youth football. I'm on many boards around town. Like I'm not, I, I sponsor a lot of things around the area. I'm someone that's invested in the community. I'm not someone that's not invested. So you, so you should think of the background of who I am and how I build things. You'd want to know the reason I came here tonight is I know that everything that was requested of me, I have completed. Everything that yeah, I completed above and beyond the, what was required by the bylaw, by the bylaw that Joe P put me into, I really tried to do the best we could. I, so look, I, I appreciate that. Uh, it, it is a lot of work to go through this process. So, I mean, um, if you want me to put ivy up on the wall to make it look better on the Andrews yeah, So, we're side, still just asking, uh, we can get to that, but I've still got just some questions to work through. And then that's should, I mean, uh, just, a, just a, yeah. one of, sure. a quick yeah. clarification yeah. on one of your points. The, yeah. But I believe it's 334 Elmwood. Um, the height of the wall abutting his property starts out at, at uh, zero feet and that's 334, right? That's not yeah, 334. 12, 12, 334, 12 and a half feet. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at 344. That's the most impacted neighbor. It's 12 and a half to... Uh, to 20 and a half, right? So let's yeah. just call that an average 16, 17 feet on an eight foot setback. It's a pretty tall wall on top of someone's property line. But the side setback is 10 feet, right? Above? Eight, that, eight that's feet. basically two stories at that corner. Yeah, that that point is the highest point because it's the deepest air to part of the slope, you know, and on that side, there's a there's a house that's 100 percent in Quincy. And then there's a house that's partial Quincy, partial Milton. Uh, I knocked on that door a few times. Never. They, I, I never talked to them. So I, I've never had any interaction with them. I've tried to communicate with them by going down there. Uh, all I can say is that I've. That's the side setback, I believe, is 10, not eight. And the front, the back setback is eight, and we went to nine. So I know that the setbacks were, we were within the setbacks. Uh, if you're telling me that you would, prefer, if we could move forward tonight and I move the setbacks back, then, you know, that's something I'm willing to discuss. Uh, again, I feel like I did, every, I did everything that the bylaw requested to get a special permit, above and beyond. If you look, I think if you looked at uh, at that point, Andrews Park, Andrews Park, uh, the rear yards of all the, the homes along uh, Andrews uh, ran a place from where the um, walkway down to uh, Andrews Park is to this property. They all they all have similar uh, steep slopes and pretty much 
unusable rear yards. So um, I'm not an attorney, no. I, but I, I believe that the uh, wall can be built by right. And it's just a matter of a question of fill, quantity of fill. And the fill that will be, the fill that will be uh, imported will be uh, similar or better than what's, what's there now. And in my professional opinion, there's no issue with respect to runoff. Yeah. So just to, to thank you for that. Part of the reason for the questions we have and, and the question is to the board, and, and this is, you know, Attorney McKetrick correctly cites this in a letter, it's, it's not exactly by right, right? You have a, a burden to, to demonstrate to the board that what you're proposing is without substantial detriment to the public good, all right? And we're trying to understand if what this is, is without substantial detriment to the public good. I've got some concerns that I want to understand and understand the, you know, what, what informed the decision to, you know, max out the footprint. Um, so that, that's that's what's you know coming out the questions here and understanding where your neighbors are, where the park department is, and you know why it had to go to the maximum are, are things that help us evaluate the question. The um, uh, I and then it's I'm sorry. Let me ask one more question. Then I, I want to um, stop dominating and let, let my other board members ask questions. But the um, I, I was surprised that a wall of this size could be built so close to property line under zoning. And I would, um, this isn't, a, I guess, a question, um, maybe for Attorney McKetrick and for my four members, but when I look at the definition of building in the zoning code, it says that any retaining wall greater than, uh, only a retaining wall that's less than five feet is not considered a building or a structure. Um, and when you look at the set, the, the exceptions for accessory uses, it talks about one story buildings of accessory use. Um, and so I'm, I'm just trying to understand, I mean, is, is there no limit to the height of a retaining wall that could be built within, you know, along a fence line? I, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if it's the 10 foot side yard and 30 foot rear yard, that is the rule that should be applied here. Cause that's what would apply to a building. And I'm trying to understand why, uh, and, uh, we'd like to hear from you actually why this is not a building. So sure. if, I, if I could just respond to one question that yeah, you, great. it's about zoning and I, you're correct in what you're reading in the, in the bylaw. Um, I will say, however, that a up to 20 feet is, um, is, is a single story uh, for, for the determination of the setbacks for structures. So you go to another part of the bylaw and you look at rear setbacks and accessory structures, you'll see that an accessory structure of up to 20 feet okay. need only be set back the, you know, the limited less, less. Now it has to be set back the required setback, whatever it is. So if you're challenging whether it's set back that correctly, that's, that's a good point. If you think that it isn't, then we need to look at that. Um, but the setback isn't the setback for a two story or a greater building. If it's no more than twenty feet, we are more than twenty feet, though, right? And uh, just to say one quick thing is the five feet that you mentioned, that's within the setback. So if you build, if you're building a, a wall within the setback that's above five feet, it's a it's second it's a secondary structure. If you're building a wall outside of the setback, it is not. So that's why uh, the height of the wall was never really in. In my mind, I thought it was approved. It was never in question. Uh, the look of the wall we could discuss, but I never thought that that would be in question. I thought this was discussed just very on fill uh, and the two the above the two hundred cubic yards needed because uh, the height. I just, again, I didn't think that that was something that was in question. Um, is the, are you saying the wall more than twenty feet? Also, too, the, the rear yard grade can be made, made slightly, slightly steeper. Okay. What was that, Bob? Um, uh, the um, rear um, yard grade could be very steeper and uh, make the wall less than if that's uh, by uh, the board. I right, saw so this was very helpful information. Um, let me pause and let my fellow board members um, 
have a chance to ask any questions they have. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gray, please. Thanks. Um, on the topic of the of the height of the wall, because the standard of review to allow the fill is that the fill can't, we need to convince ourselves that there's no substantial detriment to the public good, right? So you're, you're wanting to import 1,120 square yards of fill, which you can't do. Well, that, all right, you, you're moving 100, 1,120 yards of fill within the lot and you're bringing in 687 square yards? I believe that's the case. No, no. You're, you're using 460. square yards are coming in? 67. 675, I think. Okay, more than 200. So That's what requires a permit. Right. So the only way that you can do that is by building a wall of this size. So the height of the wall is is part of what of, is a, a main factor, in my view, that we have to take into account mm -hmm. in determining whether this um is this project as as noted is a, is a substantial detriment to the public good okay so that that's that's my point the second question i have is well, that was more of a statement than a question first question i have is all right you're building a wall that's somewhere between 11 feet to 20 to feet high right and beyond that wall is going to be grass what's the level of the wall between the grass and the yard or is, is it a, it's just smooth? Is there any, if I'm in the backyard and I'm looking towards Andrews Field, how high is, is am I seeing a wall? What am I seeing? Uh, it will be some type of uh, metal fencing. Right. This is my point. So we not only have. Or, or landscape. Height, we're, we're not only having in our height. Varieties. We're not only having in our height, the height of the wall, but the height of the fence that's on top of the wall, which is yet to be determined. Right. So landscaping. Because otherwise we're making a a structure that's 11 to 20 feet high that little kids and people are going to be wandering around this backyard playing and could fall off, right? How are we how are we dealing with the danger of the height of the wall? Well, by you know, it will be built by code to ensure the safety of whoever lives in the house. And what does the code require for a wall of that height? The uh, like spindle is no more than four factor. inches apart. Uh, the height has to be, I believe, 48 inches high. And it, and it has to go through, you know, all the, the the correct approvals by the building department. And the biggest one would be the certificate of occupancy and the fire department to make sure that they'll go through and do a life safety check and make sure that everything is, of course, built to, to the safety I'm, needed. What I'm looking for is how high is the fence on top of the wall? It's going, to, my, it's going to be around 40 to 48 inches. My, my guess is going to be around 40 inches. So about four feet. 40, so yeah, the, feet. So at its highest point, then the vertical increase from what is there now to what you're proposing is 24 feet. So my, just to let you know, my, that the fence isn't going to go on top of the wall. The fence typically is set back from the wall. So there could be, it's probably going to be at least a three foot return from where the fence is to where the wall is. Okay. But it's still sitting on top of the the land. But it won't be. Will so be as you said back, it's not seen. Above. Let me finish. That's going to be 20 feet above the bottom grade at its highest point, right? Correct. So, and that land is the, the according to what I'm looking at, it, it's very hard to read the, the plan that was submitted because it's, um, well, it's too small once you reduce it down. And even even it, it, what we got is very, uh, it's almost illegible, um, which is maybe the fault of my printer or the scanner. I don't know. But in any event, um, okay. So there's going to be something that's on top of the wall that's going to increase the height uh, for safety purposes. And it's also going to affect the view of this from the surrounding area, right? From your neighbors, from, from the park, from whatever. Um, all right, so what the, one of the other factors we have to take into account is the wall is well supported. And that I wanted to hear more about the soil that's underneath this wall and how it's going to be supported. Bob? 
structural engineer, but uh, the uh, obviously the the supplier and builder of the wall has to comply with uh, all that matters and uh, submit all that data to the to the building department and be satisfactory to them. All right. Were any any test wet test pits dug to determine what the actual soil conditions are under in this area? A structural landscape engineer was hired to design the wall to make sure it could sustain the the ground. Uh, no, no samples of the earth was taken. No, of the fill that it sits on, but we did hire a structural landscape engineer who built the wall to make sure that it could uh, withstand, uh, you know, the the fill that is that is holding up. All right, so we don't really know what's underneath it. The um, again, I have to uh, submit that I'm not a structural engineer, but the. Uh, um, USDA soil conservation survey map indicates that uh, the material is um, fine sandy loam and gravel and very gra gravelly loamy sand and gravel to very gravelly sand. So obviously the building department will require test pits. It will require um, a structural engineer to uh, design and uh, certify the both the uh, bearing capacity of the soil and the the uh, stability of the of the wall to be uh, it will be built possibly built. All right. What and what are your plans for the materials of this wall? Uh, currently, we're planning using what's called the Alden block, uh, concrete block, gray, gray material. It, it it allows seepage on its own, which is something what I we wanted to put in. Uh, it sets back so every every row it sets back one inch. You see all the block all over the place. It's you know you'll see it anywhere from a five foot wall to a thirty foot wall. Uh, I think I know what you're talking about. Um, why why is it necessary to to do this at all for your project? So the biggest so the biggest the, I can't state this more is. The best use of space is how I want like to leave my homes. What what does this family moving in need? They have no backyard. They had no backyard before I even built this. There's no backyard down all of Granite Place on the left side. So the best way, best use of space is to provide a backyard for families, especially after COVID, we can understand the mental health issues with children who don't have a yard space to play in. So this is something that I took very dearly because I am a, I'm a father. Uh, and I thought that I didn't think I would hit any resistance, to be honest, because people nowadays want outdoor space. They want, after living inside for years, this is what people really want and require. So I thought I was doing something good for the families that are moving in and I'm leaving something better after I go. Yeah, and I appreciate that. I, I'm hoping that you can appreciate that we're not trying to do this from a personal matter. I'm just, I, I'm trying to convince myself that this isn't going to be, when I, when I read the, when I read your proposal, okay, and I see an 11 to 20 foot block wall, I mean, I know that, I think I know, I, I envision the type of block that you're probably going to use at this, and I'm imagine it, you know, looking at that from the park, that's a significant impact, okay? So that, makes me a little un, uh, nervous about it. And I have to ask myself, is that a sub substantial detriment to the public good or not? I don't want to really be looking at that. I'd rather look at the woods, you know, and the sloping yard. So that's what I'm trying to balance. Um, and uh, so you're, you're, the, the testimony you're giving is helpful for that. I don't, I don't have any further questions, Mr. Leonard, thanks. And just, just one more thing before we finish up on that note. Uh, you know, even though I did talk to Mark Chisholm and he's okay with it, uh, once this wall is built, I will have a professional landscape company, which I told the about us this. We'll come in, we'll put ivy on the wall, uh, we can put arborvites, we can do whatever it takes to make this look, make the, the wall go as, you know, as nice as possible. 
you know, again, I live in the, in the, in the community. I don't want to be seen as the guy that comes in and destroys places. So, you know, once it's done, a professional landscape team will come in, find what's the best use to the, what will grow there and, and, and really provide a, a nice viewpoint from Andrews Field. Can I ask a question? I don't know. I, I have no way to communicate directly with the applicant. So I apologize to the applicant because I haven't asked this question before. And But I would like to know, because I'm hearing, you know, concerns from the board about the straight on high view of the wall and, you know, impact on neighbors and so forth. And, and there is that substantial detriment standard that we have to meet. Did you study at all creating a, a terrace, two terraces in the rear yard so that the lower part of the yard would be, would have a lower wall? That would make more walls. It's probably more expensive. But did you ever consider that? Or is this basically, this is your plan. This is the first plan. And, and you haven't looked at, at whether that would be possible because you're going to be moving a lot of earth around. Uh, you, need the, you need the movement of fill permit anyway. Um, but would that possibly be another way to create a more interesting appearance and still have a usable, you'd have, I assume you would have two levels then. Maybe it doesn't make any sense. I'm not a, <laughs> certainly not a contractor and I'm not a landscaper, but uh, I don't believe we've discussed it. And I, I'm just wondering whether we have a thought about it. I, we did, we did look at the terrorist uh, idea and because we just sat back, uh, Joe P wanted the building commissioner wanted nine feet. Then that setback will go up. That by the time we build that terraced wall, uh, you know we're looking at almost a, it would be like a close to a thirty foot setback from from where the the property line is, and it and it it, it drastically reduces the the size of the usable space for a family to play on up top. Which is why, because we're already 19 feet from the fence, which, I mean, that's almost 20 feet from the fence is when this wall starts. And then each level, it goes back an inch. So, I, so by the top by the top of the wall, if you think it's 17 feet high, you know, we're going back a couple of feet already. So it's the top of the wall is still over 20 feet away from the chain link fence of, of Adams Field. So if we took another 15 feet past that, you're looking, you know, we're, we're, we wouldn't be gaining much, much space. So, which is why we thought the best and only way to do it uh, was to go straight up. I can ask it. it yeah, go ahead. Go I'm, ahead. I'm sorry, Attorney, got you. Continue. I'm sorry, get you off. No, but. I'm, I'm just thinking. Um, you know, it still has to be set back, the required setback to the rear, even if it's ten feet rather than twenty feet. And if you're going to Correct. try to terrace with two walls then you're going to have two terraces. Each one is going to have a pretty high wall supporting it. Um, so I don't know if it's better or worse. I don't know if it can be made to look better, um, but I, I I hear some concern. And so I just want to know whether we can think about whether there are other you know similar approaches that still create a backyard. I can see that there's an issue here. Um, and I can see that looking at the property. Um, but so that's the end of my comments. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> I guess I, I um, uh, so look, I appreciate the improvement that you're making, right? And you're looking at it from the quality of your homeowner and them having a yard, right? And, and by the way, it's we, you know, it's great to see the investment in improving any property in Milton and you're making a major improvement here, which is, you know, which is, which is great for the community. Um, but we're balancing, of course, the public interest in particular with the park there. So, so you had um, 61 and a half feet from the back corner of the house to your back property line. And so you, you, in your 61 and a half feet of land that you owned, right now it looks like you have, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 feet before the slope. And so what you've done here is you've made your backyard 53, 52 and a half feet to your wall and then nine feet beyond it, right? You really made it as big as you possibly could. And I'm, I'm just, I'm seeing it the, how the contours of the elevations fall. And it looks like if you, you know, made your backyard 25 or 30 feet instead of 53 feet, you you might only have a five or 10 foot wall. And you'd also have really pulled it back from the park and you'd reduce the amount of soil that you have to come in, which helps us avoid some of the, you know, uh, we've talked about some of the visual 
aesthetic and the disruption to sort of the natural state and the current plantings. But, you know, we also have just a heightened concern about stormwater drainage into a park and erosion into a park and safety. I mean, you know, kids will be running through yards near parks, right? So, um, I mean, have you, did you evaluate um, what your design options were that were short of the maximum wall height and the maximum uh, approach to the property line? So uh, to answer the first question, you know, if we did push it back and have a 10 foot wall, we would have about a 20 to 25 foot yard from the house. Every house has either a deck or, or a patio for a livable outdoor space. So realistically, we would have, say you have a 12 foot patio or a deck, now you're looking at, you know, a 10 foot backyard. This is a backyard that kids, you really can't even play catch in. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm looking at the feasibility of, of a yard. Like what can, can, is this just a small, you know, stamp and it's just, it just looks good, but it's not really usable. And that's where we kept coming back to the idea of, you know, everything we're trying to do here won't work unless we can get at least a 20 foot backyard, a 25 foot backyard. So kids can really run around. Now, in terms of safety, again, this is going to be a fully fenced in uh, house. And again, we're 19 feet back from a chain link fence. Safety wouldn't be a concern. Uh, so it's, it's again, it's the best use of space. And I feel once the landscaping is in, a lot of this wall will disappear. Uh, yeah, I just, I just, I don't think we should put a lot of emphasis on the town currently having its fence eight feet off its property. You know, the, the town could could fix the fence and put it on the property line. So we, we have to assume the, you know, it's from the edge of the park. Um, and I guess it, to make the interesting question, that I'm guessing that the, your backyard continues to slope downward after it crosses your property line, right? On the, to the left, you mean? Yes, it, yes, it does. Yes, it does. And yeah. uh, just as so a technical really, so matter, yeah. Excuse me. As a technical matter, um, one of the issues that I you had mentioned drainage. One of the issues that impacts drainage is, is the slope of the property, as it exists now. It's a very steep slope. The runoff would be would be faster to the to Andrews Park as opposed to the proposed uh, relatively flat rear yard uh, and that would be uh best runoff uh, into Andrews Park. Um, yeah. Just a, just a, the um it just it just occurring to me I guess the point I was making is the walls 20 feet feet and as Nick pointed out it's 24 like this is you know when you add the fence but when you're standing in the park you're even lower. So um it's just a it's just a significant um, impact that I, I mean, I'd, I'd be very important to me to have the park departments have sort of a thorough presentation and formal review of it. Um, Makes sense. Yes. Yeah. But, um, With the park I'd, I'd still be, you know, I, well, let me stop. I haven't given uh, Chairman Leonard an opportunity to ask any <laughs> questions. No, let me, uh, let me thank you for all the questions that have been asked. I think they're all, pertinent and, and probative. I, I guess uh, I'm not an engineer. Uh, so I guess my first question is, could, could you describe the, the two family home? Um, is it a duplex? Is it going to be, uh, are these two condominiums? What, what's, what's the nature of the two family units that are, that are proposed to go into this place? There are two side-by-side -side townhouses. Yep. So they look kind of like uh, two single family attached homes. So but they're, they're townhouses, uh, correctly. So side-by-side -side living. How many bedrooms in each unit? Four bedrooms each side. Yep. And so are, are these... Uh, Townhouse units are they going to be? Uh, are they going to be rented or are they going to be marketed? Uh, the intention is to sell these. Okay, and you're uh, going to are you going to sell them as condominiums? Correct.
Okay. Um, one one of the problems that I that I have here is I, I think that my colleagues have have some very very sensible and, and reasonable concerns about all of this. Um, under normal circumstances, I mean, here we have three lawyers, <laughs> name of Joe, and to ask me to build a chicken coop in my backyard, I would fail. And so I understand the investment that uh, Mr. Anastasia has in, in this project. Uh, but honestly, I, I don't feel that I have the ability to properly assess this type of um, structural issue. And, and from, from my perspective, um, sure, we should have the park department look at this. We should have the building department look at this. But they haven't looked at it at the present time. And I, to be frank, I don't know why they haven't. Um, and I'm not blaming them. I mean, it's not their job to go around seeking uh, work or analyses that uh, haven't been sought by the building inspector or by uh, by the applicants. So that that concerns me a little bit, uh, and I, I think there there are two alternatives here. Uh, the first one, which I thought I would like, I'm not sure I do like it, and and that is if uh, if we're really interested in getting a scientific and uh, objective analysis of what is being built here, uh, we could have this property peer reviewed. And we have that right under the bylaw. We could, we could have a uh, uh, an engineer with the uh, distinction of Mr. Hannigan, who's been before this board many, many times, uh, take an independent look at this. Um, now, I think that's a time-consuming and an expensive endeavor. And I can understand the expense that Mr. Anastasia is going through in order to redevelop this property. But the redevelopment plan that he's proposing is drastically inconsistent with the neighborhood. It may be wonderful for your particular development. You may be able to get higher fair market values for each of these units. Uh, but it's inconsistent with all of the properties that, as I understand it, in the neighborhood. So I'm, I'm not sure whether that's a reasonable approach under the circumstances. On the other hand, I, I think Mr. Anastasia has indicated some uh, flexibility uh, or, or willingness to review and maybe redesign his, his backyard project so that it's less drastic and maybe more in in conformity with uh, uh, the neighborhood and, and, and not something that looks like uh, a, a huge development for profit uh, that is uh, entirely inconsistent with the neighboring properties. Now, I don't even know whether any of the neighbors are going to object to this or, or how they go. We haven't gotten to that stage uh, of this hearing, but... Uh, so that was that's my other thought uh, is does it make sense uh, to and, and I, I'm tired of continuing hearings, but we seem to do it all the time. Does it make sense to continue this hearing to give Mr. Anastasia in his development team, Mr. Hannigan, an opportunity to maybe take a second look at this proposed project and perhaps to maybe maybe modify it to some uh, substantial extent? that um, it's not going to be perfect and uh, Mr. Anastasia is not going to be thrilled, but to, to do something that may be less drastic on the neighborhood and could be done um, with Mr. Hannigan and the other in-house people uh, with coordination from the, the town um, as opposed to going out and having a full-scale peer review of this backyard and the wall issue uh, by an independent uh, consulting engineer. I, I don't know how much that would cost. I mean, I suppose we'd get put it out for bid, but uh, Mr. Hannigan, let me ask you, do you, have, do you have any idea if we went out and picked a uh, distinguished and well-qualified peer reviewer, 
what it would cost to do this type of analysis? I really don't. It would depend, obviously, on the scope of what, what the review would be. But uh, I think um, whether that's an option or not, I think uh, uh, Tim Anastasia would, would probably best opine on that. Uh, Tim, do you have any idea as to what uh, what it would cost for an independent peer review of your uh, backyard design and the wall? Uh, no, I, to be honest, I've never never came to that point in the in my uh, you know my past experiences with building. Okay. Uh, uh, Jim, Jim, Jim and Leonard, uh, I'm <laughs> my. Uh, Getting the ball into Tim's uh, court, it was more of whether he would agree to that or not, or whether he would look at the uh, options available, possibly redesign. That's I wasn't asking him to to price out a. Um, oh, I, I'm sorry. I thought it, it yeah. came across that way. To me. Yeah, no, so I apologize for that. Yes, that's, that's all right. Uh, but uh, if I, if I'm correct, and I, I really didn't review the zoning bylaw for this purpose. Uh, I, I think uh, the board has the power as a matter of right to require a peer review if we wanted to do so. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 My, 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 look, my thought is, is this. I, I, I have no clear <clears throat> one way or the other on this, uh, except to note that in my view, this project presently uh, it is not uh, prime time for uh, for a vote, and I, I suggest that uh, uh, we do two, two, two things. Number one, uh, explore the possibility of a peer review uh, and, and get a couple of estimates and see exactly what the cost is and how long it will take and uh, how much uh, um, refinement we really need uh, and, and how much definition that we need. I, I think Mr. Hannigan's probably right. If, if you're going to go out and have someone redesign the backyard, I think it's a very expensive endeavor. But to have someone look at it and conceptually make some suggestions that may be helpful, uh, probably less. But uh, we can determine what that cost is before we make a decision. The other alternative, uh, in my view, is to... Uh, um, give Mr. Uh, Anastasia an opportunity to confer with Mr. Hannigan and uh, and possibly uh, uh, come up with a redesign of the wall or the backyard uh, so that it is less uh, intrusive and more in keeping with uh, some of the neighboring properties, even though they're not using their backyards. Um, does, let me let me ask uh, Mr. Mr. Conley, what do you, what do you say to, to to all of this in terms of where we proceed from here? Yeah, I, mean, I think look, I think we flagged um, some legitimate concerns that we have on the board. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think from what we've had presented yet that the you know the burden that the applicant has to meet to demonstrate no substantial detriment has been reached yet. You know, it's a heightened standard here, giving, uh, I mean, even for the abutters that are very impacted by it, the residential neighbors uh, on Elmwood in particular, but we've got, you know, we've got the public park to protect and um, the, um, so, you know, between not really having any, you know, evidence of support from these parties uh, and all of these concerns in particular, I, I think there's definitely any project as ambitious as this, I think, would be difficult for us to support without some peer review to tell us that it's going to be, you know, it's going to satisfy everything that that doesn't that has verified everything that you know Mr. Hannigan has reported to us. You know, as a less ambitious project may warrant may not warrant that, right? But I think um, I, I I don't think it's a in a position that the, that I'd be able to support as proposed. And um, but it may be that with further work with the town and study and design, it could get there. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with what you, you're saying, Brian, because uh, I'm somewhat shocked that the town, I don't think the town is present at this hearing tonight. Uh, maybe there is somebody from the town, we'll find out. But uh, the, the town seems to be a third party out 
uh, on on this particular design, and uh, I don't think it should be. Mm -hmm. Maybe if they weighed in on this, uh, it may be possible to avoid a peer review. I don't, uh, I, I don't know. Um, Mr. Gray, what do you have to say? Nick, do you have any comments? Sorry, you broke up right in the middle. I didn't know if you were talking to, to Attorney McKenna um, for me. The, the um, whole broadcasting has been breaking up as we go along. <laughs> uh, I, um, I very much uh, agree with your comments and Mr. Conley's comments. Um, I, I understand the rationale for the project from the point of view of this particular piece of property. If I were living in one of the condominiums, I, I, I get it. Um, but for the reasons you know, that we've stated tonight, I, I would need more evidence uh, that this is not violate, not it's substantially, you know, a, a harmful to the public good or whatever the phrase is before I could support it in earnest. And one of the things that, you know, in, in my limited work uh, with condominiums, very limited work with condominiums, but if, this is a, if the, if the project were built as it's specified, right, it, it's, I, I, I think we could agree it's a pretty big wall, right? And I'm sure it's going to be built really great. I don't know how long walls like that tend to last, right? What, what kind of maintenance they need. and But I do know that condo boards, it would be the condominium association's responsibility to maintain the wall. Um, they're probably not going to, I mean, I don't know. They may be thinking about it, but most condo boards are more, you know, worried about paying for their uh, property insurance and the, snow plowing and they don't think about long-term maintenance. My point is that, that we could be saddling the neighborhood, if you will, with a with a, reta a large retaining wall that um, might not have um, a basis for support long-term, right? That, that, and I, maybe that's not a factor in the, our analysis, and, but that it's just something that crossed my mind while we were talking. And so, if as part if if there is part of the des uh, redesign process if that's if that's what um, the applicant decides to do if there could be just some talk about the type of maintenance that might be required longer term for a wall of this nature that might help uh, help me understand what the long term effect would be on the neighborhood. Okay. Um, what just one other point, if I could, Mr. Chairman, too. I, you know, because I, I do think this is a board that tries to help homeowners and and you know, particular people growing housing in town. Um, but it, we should be mindful that um, this this isn't an inherited, you know, small backyard issue, right? That the the applicants choosing to add a major expansion off of the existing rear of the building to convert this to two family, right? We we could keep it as this current. Um, size no, it, it is a two-family. I'm sorry, you can keep family. it as its current structure, I mean to say. Yes. Um, and you would have all the room you needed for the backyard for the families, right? And But it's, it's you know, you're right to expand it, um, but that uh, in expanding the structure, you are creating the limited backyard, right? And that's that's fine, mm -hmm. but that's, you know, um, mm -hmm. not necessarily a burden that the town should have to uh, accommodate if it if it has any discomfort. Just, just so everyone's aware, I didn't expand the, how deep it went. I, you know, it's it's almost the same in the back as it was with the existing structure. So I did not take away the backyard experience. That was never there when I bought it. The house was standing up out of habit. It hasn't been lived in for years. Uh, if you look at the, the site plan, you can see that there was an addition that's in the middle of this. This uh, you can see the of a, 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 a small addition that's in in black. That's in the middle of the new addition that's being built. That's how deep it went. So we're almost at the exact same level of where the exist where the where the original house was. So there was never a backyard. Uh, there was also a, a garage that's not being shown right here on this property. That was to the left of the of the old addition. So there's, I just want to make sure that people understand. I'm not. I'm um, so the plan I have so it has new has a big cross hatched portion of the building called new construction. Mm -hmm. So do you see in the middle of that new construction? Do you see a a, a black framed uh, like rectangle? 
No, that's not in our plans. Where where it says C O N S, um, there's a where it says C O N S, C O N S. Yeah, it says new construction, the area that's um, C O N S. Yeah, that's the previous uh, addition. And that was the original structure. Correct. And to the left and, and of that was for the big garage. It's a garage, right? So, so there, there wasn't. I guess what I'm trying to tell you is, there was never a backyard. So I'm not trying but, because but you're, I'm you're adding, adding the, 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 I'm adding yeah, more the, to the right side. Right. The so the work construction is there. STRU, CTION, et cetera. That's all new structure, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. So yeah, that's I think that's the point I'm making. But, but thank you. So that's to, to the that side yard was not very usable to begin with. That sloped into the other people's to the, the north side of this house. I guess, I mean, we could, you know, I guess my plan would be to go back and take to heart what everyone here said, make changes that hopefully will be acceptable to the board, bring the wall back, bring the wall lower, uh, maybe show an elevation of what it will look like from Andrews Park, uh, and then come back, I guess, at a later date and, and see if what my changes uh by by making this project smaller uh is more beneficial and, and acceptable for for everyone here on the board well I mean, that that may be the way this works itself out but uh, let me let's not get too far ahead of ourselves here so uh, we've we've commented on the project mrs McKetrick has made a great presentation as says mr Hannigan. let's let's just proceed a little bit more with this hearing and um, unless you have something further to add, Marion, I'd, I'd like to ask whether there's any member of the public uh, attending this uh, virtual hearing who wants to be heard on this application. Julia, is there anyone out there who has their hands up? Yes, I have a couple hands up. Is that Mr. or Mrs. Her son? With the hands up, can can you? Yeah, I just allow them to speak. It looks like their microphone is off, so they just have to turn it on, and then they should be good to go. Great. Hello, Mr. or Mrs. Her son. Could you turn your microphone on, please, and perhaps even turn on your. Uh, your camera, if that's possible. Whoops. They just removed their hand from being raised, so I'll, I'll move on to the next one, uh, Kevin Cullen. Mr. Cullen? Hi there. Can hey, you welcome, hear me? Welcome to the uh, Milton Board of Appeals. Yes, uh, good evening. Uh, Why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, no, I, please, I, sir, 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 please. Let's go slow. Would you please identify, please identify yourself for the record, sir? Yes, my name is Kevin Cullen. I live at 338 Elmwood Avenue. Uh, I abut the, this new development uh, on the north, on the east side, sorry, on the east side. Uh, my comment is simply this, uh, you know, it's too late for a peer review of the scope of this development. Uh, How do you say that? My concern is uh, there is a no, no, no. Mr. Cullen, no. Can you stop one second? Why do you say it's too late to have a peer review of a, of a proposal? Because product? the structure is largely already built. Well, we're not really talking about the structure. That's yes, I understand that. But what uh, the, my concern is this. Uh, it, the There's a steep grade, not just down into Andrews Park, but there's a steep grade down into Elmwood Avenue. Uh, I'm told that uh, Robert Hannigan has uh, put together a, a, a development for dry wells. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm delighted that they're going, they're concerned about the water runoff. Uh, my concern is, is it gonna be sufficient? I mean, we've already had this structure that sits high above us, but now my concern is, are we going to, for the first time in a hundred years, have water in our basements? My, my home is a hundred years old, never had a drop. 
Uh, but this structure sits so high above us and uh, you, you don't build a 20 foot retaining wall unless this slope is un incredibly steep. It's steep on our side too. And uh, I, I just don't know if there's at this stage any protection that the town of Milton can provide. Uh, you know, we have to, uh, you know, uh, uh, believe that uh, the, the the developer Tim and his engineer, their 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 uh, run water runoff is going to protect us. But you know, how do I know it's going to protect us? I mean, it's uh, we, we have to trust them. When, when I brought this before, I spoke to Mary McKetrick uh, months ago about this. And, and when we talked about it, she was concerned about that. So I, my, my concern is, you know, we're, we're really worried on this side. And not to mention, we don't want to look at a, you know, my, my neighbor at 344 Elmwood, it doesn't want to look at a 17 foot wall out their backyard. Well, I think, uh, thank you. You're, we appreciate your comments and, and your points. I, I think that uh, I, I can't answer those questions because uh, this particular hearing has been basically the applicant's hearing. And uh, this issue, to, to my mind, uh, maybe it has been addressed by Mr. Hannigan, but I don't know whether it's been specifically addressed by him. I don't know what studies uh, he's performed. I don't know uh, what uh, what the town and the building department and the town engineers uh, have to say about water runoff issues here. Uh, the um, none none of that issue has been explored uh, adequately in, in in my view. Uh, but uh, let let me just ask Mr. Hannigan because um, he's he's certainly an expert. Uh, uh, could could you tell us about the water runoff? Uh, has it been analyzed in a, a sophisticated way by hydrologists or other uh, skilled practitioners? And if, if it hasn't been, uh, um, how complicated is that? And uh, what what kind of assurance uh, as of the present time? And I'm not being critical of you, Mr. Hannigan. Uh, can you give Mr. Cullen that uh, this construction as proposed originally um, wouldn't exacerbate the uh, water runoff conditions. I, um, as I stated before, I had no issues with respect to runoff, uh, especially in that area or actually anywhere on the property due to the soils that exist. Um, as a result of uh, Mr. Prondack's uh, comment uh, that the gutters and downspouts be uh, recharged into dry wells. We provided that. Um, that's especially, as I said, I've been in the business uh, for doing this type of work with soils for more than a half a century. And, and as a, a certified uh, soil evaluator since the uh, DEP uh, established that program 25 years ago. So um, I, I see no issue with that. Uh, we get this comment frequently from abutters and unfortunately uh, abutters aren't aware of a lot of the issues, but uh, nothing to disrespect uh, Mr. Cullen, but uh, I, I feel very confident of uh, what we propose. Isn't there some type of runoff? Isn't there some type of scientific testing or analysis that could be done looking at the uh, the winter season and the water or the, the rainstorms that are typical and the slope of the property as proposed and the wall and uh, the soils, as you say, so that you can come up with some type of a, a mathematical uh, um, conclusion that uh, those conditions wouldn't warrant um, the concern of serious water runoffs. Mr. Prondack's uh, concern was the uh, uh, runoff from the roof on the, the uh, north side of the property, uh, especially uh, with respect to uh, lawn areas that because the lawn areas uh, run off would not recharge um, as fast as it would normally with a larger uh, 
lawn area. Uh, that's specific, specifically why um, we decided to actually roof run off from the uh, gutters and downspouts and, and recharge them into the dry wells. And that's, that's just, um, uh, as far as analysis is concerned, um, I both uh, relied on the uh, uh, Soil Conservation Service maps and, and the, their data, and then also observations uh, um, during construction of the type of material that's there. Uh, it's very bony gravel, recharges very rapidly. Uh, with, with the septic system, you do a prick test, but in that type of material, Prick test is, I mean, first of all, it's a very low tech type of a uh, test, but uh, what you do typically with a prick test is saturate uh, uh, the um, water in a, in a hole for uh, 15 minutes and then measure the time that, uh, that it takes to drop one inch and get the average. And this type of material, you couldn't saturate it. You'd be pouring water in forever and it wouldn't saturate. So. I'm very confident both the material and the reference to the uh, uh, Soil Conservation Service maps, um, that's, that's material you, you, you die for, it's, you know, I mean, to recharge stormwater runoff. I would like to add that the, the roof on this current structure has been up for several weeks or say a few weeks, so two and a half to three. And in that time, we've had a couple of big rainstorms and not an ounce of rain, not an ounce of water or, or a puddle on the property. And I don't know if Mr. Cullen can say if he had any water in his uh, basement or not, but we've had some serious rainstorms since the roof of this property has been on. And, and we have not seen any, any damage to any property surrounding us. Uh, and also the, the non permeable space from what we're building to what was currently, what was there, where it's almost going to be less. There was granite all there was granite all over this property, all cement, all over the front of this house, and you know so we're going to be we're close to less non permeable space than what was currently there. Let me ask you a question that I I just don't know the answer to, and that is uh, when you're constructing a project like this, you obviously need uh, for your own personal and corporate protection. Uh, reasonable insurance coverage. And I wonder whether uh, if for whatever reason uh, the applicant's analysis of the water situation is wrong uh, and Mr. Cullen uh, does in fact uh, uh, start uh, having water in his basement uh, as a result of the construction activity. Uh, would he have availability for, for protection um, to his residence against your insurance policy for that type of issue? Or is that something that's... Uh, it's... Impacted? So we have risk and liability insurance for all construction projects, which basically replaces homeowner's insurance. So your, so your homeowner's policy is similar to the insurance policy that we have. Yeah, but does, does your uh, policy cover uh, a, a claim by Mr. Cullen that uh, the, your project has caused uh, uh, water to infiltrate in his basement. Or so I guess at that point, I think his insurance company would have to notify mine. And that's how that goes. Just the same as yours. Like say if your neighbor had water run off and they blamed you, you sent it to your insurance company. And the same thing would happen with me. Uh, but they do have the same because we all have mortgages. So all banks require the same type of insurance coverage, whether you're living the home or whether you're building the home. I don't, I don't know if that uh, applies to uh, to water uh, seepage. I, I just don't know. Uh, no, because it's flood. Yeah, I, I don't think it doesn't. The, the, other, uh, the other part of this is I have had some experience with water seepage in large buildings in downtown Boston and um, learned from that how uh, how sinister um, water infiltration is. Um, but uh, let, let me uh, 
Uh, if I'm allowed, uh, I'd, I'd be willing to, excuse me, uh, Chairman Lennon. Okay. I'd be willing to take a look at uh, Mr. Cullen's basement and uh, make any recommendations that I felt necessary, uh, but uh, that's the, the that, that, that may be uh, an option. Let me check with my colleagues. So, Mr. Gray, what do you? Yeah, here's the bottom line for me. Okay. Uh, questions from regarding Mr. Cullen. Yeah, here's the bottom line. The, this property sits based on the, the, the GIS map that you've produced as evidence. This property sits at its highest 30 feet above the front of Mr. Cullen's yard. It, it, there's a, so in order for me to be able to approve a project like this, where there's going to be a massive disturbance to the existing site from what's there currently, I, I would need to see peer review to give us independent analysis that we're not going to cause the, uh, it's a 30 foot drop in a short amount of time. Um, and we're moving a lot of the earth around, we're disturbing the backyard and the natural, the topography that's existed since, well, I don't know when, but for a long time. And, before I could approve that, I would need to see some peer review that says, uh, that says, yeah, that this is going to be fine for water runoff purposes. It's not going to destroy that, that. That's, that's the type of evidence I'm going to be looking for in order to give this a yes vote. Mr. Connolly, please. Yeah, I, I, um, agree with, um, with everything Nick said and, you know, with all the consensus, I think the board has been expressing with its concerns. Okay. Uh, thank you. I, I do actually have one other uh, question for Attorney McKetrick. If we're if it, it, it seems like we're heading toward a continuance, and you know, oh, right. we talked about. Yep. So I, I am um, just concerned about this um, setback issue and the the right interpretation of the code. I mean, I think I think we'd all agree that you know, if it was a a, a one story ranch style house that was occupied within ten feet of the rear yard lot line, you couldn't do that you know, a 12 foot wall on a ranch house. So that's why I, I, it doesn't seem right to me that you can put a 20 foot retaining wall up when the purpose of the setback is to have some separation between, you know, structures that, that impact abutting properties. And I'm just concerned about the precedent here. So it'd be helpful to have um, your sort of view and explanation of why the, you know, setbacks shouldn't apply. And it, I think, I don't know who I'd like it to be sort of, you know, reviewed and verified by I'm not sure who the right person for the town would be, but I think um, uh, I wouldn't want to be creating a, a precedent of us approving such significant height within what would otherwise be setbacks without, um, you know, the town having thought about it and agreed that's the right way to apply the code to the set of facts. Marion, do you want to be heard on this? Get it. Unmute it, Marion. Yep. Okay. Um, I can provide an analysis of the of, in, in my view, what the current zoning bylaw requires, and I agree with you. There's some gray areas here. I want to review it myself now that we've had this discussion. Um, th that would be my opinion that I would be providing to this board. We currently don't have an, a building commissioner. We have two acting building commissioners who are our uh, building inspectors who've been here for a long time. But um, for the last 17 years, Joseph Prondek has been doing a lot of the zoning decision. Joe Prondek had the last word on, you know, what the decisions would be when it came to zoning. So that leaves a little bit of a gap. And so I'm just asking you to request of me my best. That's yeah, that's all we can, we can ask. And I will give it to you. And that's I'm great. not sure at this point we have someone we can hand that over to. Normally, I would give it back to Joe Prondek and say, you know, do you agree? Do you disagree? Please send a message to the board. Um, so on that point, on the um, it's it's very clear that you have concerns about the height of this wall, the way it looks, the perception of the park department, um, and and also the neighbors. You've heard something about that already, and so that's one issue. That isn't really what I call a peer review issue. That's a design issue. And if the applicant is willing to go back and and see whether he can do things to modify the design that might make it more acceptable from all these, and you've explained very well what your concerns are, that's one thing. 
if you really feel it's necessary to have a peer review, I think you're talking about a stormwater analysis. You just you you want an engineer to to review well, whatever yeah. the plan is to then come back and say to the board, yay or nay, there will be no runoff um, in a hundred year storm um, beyond. You know, in other words, the runoff on this property will be contained on this property. Um, that's the usual standard, and that that's what you're asking about, I think. Well, that, I mean, also a, a structural um, peer review. I think we don't have anything on the record about the structural design of the wall, and I think I think a collapsing wall or a you know a deteriorating wall due to lack of deferred maintenance, particularly one for, for the park yeah. would be a concern, right? And and obviously it's the soils that are, that we're allowing on the site they're going to create the situation, right? So I think um, it would be both the runoff, stormwater runoff, erosion, and structural stability would be things. Again, it is a, that you don't worry about in a five foot wall that you do worry about in a 20 foot wall. Marion, let me ask you this question. Uh, and <laughs> it's my, my naivete, I guess. <clears throat> Has this project been reviewed by Tim Swazinski? No, and it wouldn't be normally. This wouldn't go to the planning board. This is not a, this not is, this is a zoning question. The Milton Town Planner, that's what I understood him to be. So, yeah, but normal. I mean, I'm just saying the procedure would not usually involve zoning cases. Don't go to the town planner normally, unless there's also a planning board input that's required. And I'm not saying that he wouldn't have valuable. He might have, but he has so much to do that normally, if it's a zoning question, he sends it back. And when we had Joe Prondack, he sent it back to Joe Prondack for an opinion. Um, that's just how it was done. It's sort of a division of labor. Um, I, I, you know, I, it really, you're talking about the way this looks and the, and also talking about structural issues and stormwater issues. So two of those are engineering issues. The other two are, are design issues. And to the extent that the applicant is willing to go back and study the design further and see if he can come up with something that appears to address these, some of these concerns. I mean, that seems to me to be step one, actually. And then the peer review of whatever that plan is, if he wishes to come up with an alternative plan. Um, I mean, even if you, you let me ask the, <laughs> through the chair, the question is, if you had a peer review done and it said this is structurally sound and there will be no, you know, there's no stormwater issue, there isn't going to be undue runoff, it's going to be contained. Um, what I'm hearing from you is that you don't like this wall, nevertheless. You don't like the height of it and the way it looks. So you want us, you want the applicant to go back and and um, take another look and see if he can make it an improved design. Am I understanding you incorrectly, or is that what you're saying? Well, I think that's a that's a large sense of the issue uh, that the board is uh, considering whether this uh, is uh, so out of character and so dramatic that. Uh, it uh, it's difficult to apply uh, special permitting rules and and approve of something that's this dramatic and different and I uh, and, and maybe that's a sensible way of uh, of, of proceeding here. Uh, let me let me go on and just ask uh, um, Julia: Is there anybody else out there? Any member of the public who has their hand up and wants to be heard? Yes, we have one more. Miss uh, Paolucci, are you there? Hello, yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Do you want to? Uh... Uh, yes, I live, uh, my name is Sheila Pellucci. Uh, my husband, Jim, and I live at 350 Elmwood Ave. So we're um, at the bottom, um, our house at Bus Andrews Park, um, and we directly do see the big mound of dirt um, in the backyard. Um, and I just wanna thank the board members for bringing up these concerns um, because we all in the neighborhood have the same concerns about the water and the, the wall, the um, design of like the looks of the wall. I feel like we're gonna be looking at a prison wall in our backyard. Um, the safety, um, we've already, I've already had to, tell kids to get off the big mound of dirt multiple times. So I would have to think if there's a family living there with children, that could be a concern. I know Tim said there would be maybe a fence. 
But kids often climb over our fence, climb over the park fence, and climb up the wall. Um, it's just, it's a completely different design than what was up there. Um, we're not, you know, like I said, the Elmwood Ave neighbors are not thrilled with the whole thing. We have a lot of concerns. So I just wanted to thank the board for bringing up those concerns as well. Um, and I know the neighbors up on Granite Place, of course, would like it because they're not looking. They're going to be looking at a beautiful new house, not looking at a 20 foot wall. So Tim and the board members, if you would um, like to come over and come to my backyard and see what we'll all be looking at and see and hear our concerns, you are welcome to come anytime. I can email you my phone number, ring the bell. Tim, I know you said you came and, and tried to talk to us. I don't know when that happened. We're always out in our backyard. Unless it was during the day, we do have to work. But um, I just want to thank the board members for um, expressing their same concerns. Okay, thank, thank you very much, uh, uh, Sheila. Uh, uh, Julia, is there anybody else out there? Yes. John and Barbara. Yes, hi. I'm John Sullivan, and we're at 334 Elmwood Ave. We're right beside Kevin Cullen and directly on the corner of the property. Good. Welcome to the Board of Appeals. Thank you very much for this, taking the time to have this hearing. Uh, I felt that talking with Tim and giving him my concerns about the dry wells would be a helpful situation concerning runoff. Uh, there were trees on the back of the property there. They've cut them down, and the, the, the side of the building, I should say. They've cut them down, and so there's a lot of just wood chips built up there. Uh, I, too, as like Kevin, have concerns about water coming into the yard because of the drop-off. It's a steep drop-off. If you're ever there during a rainstorm and you see the water running off the street, down the park, the uh, walkway that's public property, belongs to the town, uh, it, it pours down. It leaves residue all over the place. There is a sewer that catches some of it, but not all of it. So it runs out into the street. It would be really sad to see water. It just strikes me as that there's been no test. There is a, a brick wall, an uh, Alden brick wall there now, and I'm assuming that would alleviate some runoff, but there's still concern about the runoff coming here. The dry well seems to be further forward towards Granite Place. Uh, so I don't know if it would catch everything or what. So just wanted to give my two cents worth in, and I think it's great this hearing is happening. Thank you. Okay, great, uh, Mr. Sullivan. We appreciate your comments. Uh, Julia, anybody else out there? Nope, that was it. Okay. Um, so let's uh, recircle the wagons here and, and then see where we go. Um, uh, Brian, uh, do you think it's productive uh, for the applicant to uh, take a couple of deep breaths and go back and reconsider uh, the proposal and reasonable modifications to the proposal that would uh, uh, allay the concerns of the board members and uh, the neighbors? Um, or are the, I'll call it hydro, hydrological issues here, um, so complex that uh, you really need a, a a water runoff study by a professional um, engineer to allay the concerns of the board. Um, well, I mean, look, it's it's definitely going to help the case to have an independent review of the stormwater issue. I I do think it's going my answer is going to relate to what the revised proposal looks like, John. Yep. Right, and I think a more modest proposal. Um, 
might not um, require that that type of review. And uh, a more ambitious one, I think, definitely would. So I, I think they, they sort of um, relate to each other. Okay, I think that's very well put. Uh, Mr. Gray, what do you have to say? Um, I uh, I actually agree with what uh, with what Attorney Conley just said. Um, I think the the obviously um, couldn't support it tonight uh, on the available evidence, and therefore it's it's either deny the application tonight, which I don't think the applicant would would prefer uh, would probably not like that to happen. So that suggests that a redesign, um, taking into cons uh, consideration some of the comments, the comments made tonight, um, to a sense to do that, and then uh, assess. I I think I think Marion's point about assessing that 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 the the peer review, if if necessary, doesn't make as would be more useful once the project if the project is redesigned. Correct. That that I. It it that, doesn't, that's her position. yeah I think I think that I think that's wise so um, this is a long winded way of saying I agree with what Brian said okay uh, thank you Nick uh, Marion uh, do you uh, do you want to uh, uh, suggest uh, the alternative of a project review by uh, Mr Anastasia and, and his development team and uh, if if so. Uh, approximately uh, how long do you think uh, uh, that would take? Um, I agree with Nick that uh, Mr. Anastasia spent a lot of time and money on this project, and uh, I, I think it would be not fair to him uh, to deny the application for relief. Um, but on the other hand, uh, I think uh, substantial modification of this project is, is going to be required. Um, so um, do, you, do you have any suggestions as to whether that uh, uh, review and possible modification is something that the applicant wants to consider? And if so, uh, what, what's a fair amount of time to uh, continue this hearing so that we can receive uh, revised materials and then make a determination as to whether further technical studies are necessary. Um, would you be willing to do that, um, Tim? <laughs> and would you think a month would be adequate time? Yeah, yeah, I think Bob and I can get together and I can sp uh, speak to the structural engineer that that uh, did do the, the current uh, engineering for, for the wall, uh, which Joe Pondike did have. He did have the structural engineering uh, plans for the wall. Uh, that he did approve, uh, just so you know. But I'll go back and you know I'll give it another look and I'll cut this thing way back and uh, see where we can make things a little bit nicer and not as high. And you know, after reviewing everyone's input, I'm sure we can come to a, a fair and equitable solution uh, for everyone. And you think a month would be adequate to come back with some? Oh, yeah, I think we'll be ready for it. Well, Bob, what do you think? We should be fine for the next meeting. Say so, yes. Well, if if I can make a suggestion. So the next meeting that this group has scheduled is for July 26th. And um, you know, I just don't want to underestimate the amount of work you might have. Um, both, uh, you know, I'm sure you have way more command than we would of your engineering requirements, but You've got to spend some time with your neighbors if you heard from tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure that's a, a quick or not a quick conversation. And um, you've got to find, I, I don't know how often, I'm not, I'm not sure how the Milton Parks Department would convene and meet and take some sort of formal action to weigh in on this, right? It, it would be more than a, I spoke to so and so, right? We would need something more on the record to help us understand uh, how the town views this. So I'd hate to... Uh, on the one hand, I'd hate to schedule it and, and have not given you enough time. On the other hand, uh, I'm also thinking of our schedules and we've got we've got a hearing and I'm, I'm feeling like that might be a, a more appropriate cadence for the project if, if it's acceptable to the applicant. Yeah. Well, I know I'm at that hearing, so <laughs> whatever. Um, that gives you more time. Um, would you be, would that be, would, could you work with that, Tim? Coming yeah. back July 26th? Yeah. 
yeah. then of course you have to get as very you know as much as you possibly can get done that with all of the things that Mr. Connolly just referred to, and it will take some time. So, okay, okay. So uh, I guess we have a consensus. Nick is the twenty sixth. Uh, okay with you? Uh, yep. It's it's yes. It is okay. So we we already have the uh, the talkie hearing at scheduled at seven o'clock. So why don't we? Uh, th that shouldn't be as long or complicated as this. So why don't we schedule this at seven thirty? Is that okay, Mrs. McGetrick? That would be fine. And I think I agree with you on the talkie hearing. The issue there is the conservation commission. They're they're really dealing with all the details. Some of the things we're talking about here. Um, so it, that should work. And that's yeah, certainly, uh, I, can I, that. I, think, I think that uh, Brian's uh, comments are, are uh, appropriate because uh, uh, to me that the town has been absent from this process. Maybe that's because Joe is retired and I'm sorry, this has gone on to uh, other pastors. Um, and uh, you, you may indeed uh, have difficulty getting uh, some of the town departments uh, up to speed and um, ready, willing, and able to make comments or write letters uh, regarding the issues we've discussed. So I think uh, the 26th is a, uh, is a fair date. Uh, so uh, with uh, further ado, if everyone uh, is in agreement, we're going to continue this particular application uh, until July 26th, 2023 at uh, 7 p.m. And uh, yeah. I'd like 7.30. Did I say 7.30? You said 7, I think. Okay. Well, I didn't mean to. 7.30! <laughs> um, okay. I also, I, Not the double book. I, I also <laughs> want to thank uh, uh, Mr. Anastasia and, uh, uh, and uh, Mr. Hannigan for uh, um, their participation at the hearing and for their uh, the willingness to review and consider the in the issues that the board has raised, and hopefully, uh, um, if we can resolve these issues at the uh, at the next hearing. So, with with all of that, uh, wish everyone a good evening, and uh, thank you for appearing and participating. And see you on the twenty sixth of July. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. All right. Have a good evening. Thanks, Thanks Julia. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye. -bye.